Hi, uh, John from York Bay Financial Partners, uh, looking at the investment markets. Um, the latest jobless uh, numbers out of the US uh, were still reasonably strong, but uh, just a little bit light on expectations. They came in at 431,000 versus around 490 expected. Now that's still a pretty robust number and shows that the, you know, the US economy is still pushing along at a pretty good rate. Indeed, around 1.7 million jobs have been added in the last quarter. Now the US economy for the last year grew at around 5.7%, and that's a pretty reasonable rate. But that has to be set in context uh, against uh, the amount of government support, which was just over $6 trillion. So now obviously the big worry is that, uh, you know, the Fed is certainly behind the curve, behind the eight ball in terms of its fight against inflation. Um, we've seen uh, various Fed uh, governors coming out now and potentially uh, pointing to a more aggressive sort of policy coming from the Fed um, as they try and tackle inflation. Now, obviously, if you read between the lines on that, you know, potentially they're looking at a, a 50 basis point hike rather than a 25 basis point hike at various meetings. And that's seen the 10 year now spike above that 2.5%, um, currently trading around 2.56. Interesting as well in the US that uh, we've seen a slight inversion of the yield curve, um, the two year to uh, 10 year. Now that potentially is a uh, sign of a recession, uh, but it's just a question of how much sort of lead time that sort of takes. Um, you know, it can take uh, six to nine months. It can take as, as long as sort of 18 to 24 months. So certainly, you know, the US economy is pretty robust, it's pretty strong, and, uh, you know, it's just going to be very interesting going forward to see, one, how the Fed addresses its fight against inflation, but also as well, obviously, the uh, impact and implications of the ongoing dispute in uh, Ukraine. Because obviously economically, the main, one of the major consequences of that has been the rising oil prices. Now, President Biden's come out and said that you know, he's prepared to tap into the uh, strategic reserves in the US now and release um, some of those reserves. And that took the price briefly below uh, 100 bucks a barrel. But now certainly in Ukraine, it's just going to be very interesting to see what happens because certainly Russia, although it hasn't sort of put up the white flag, it's sort of indicated that it started to withdraw from around the sort of Kiev uh, region um, and sort of really looking to sort of uh, fortify its, uh, its sort of base in the, around the sort of Donbass area in the uh, eastern Ukraine. But what it has left as the Russian troops have sort of been uh, retreating and sort of moving back is a horrific uh, scale of mass destruction of buildings and just sort of wanton killing of uh, uh, innocent civilians. Now that's obviously led to some pretty strong condemnation from the West and uh, you know talk about sort of war crimes and uh, war criminals etc and it's just going to be very interesting to see how that plays out because uh, it would be very hard to see how President Putin would put on trial for war, war crimes. And for their part, the Russians have said this is all fake news, it's all staged, um, that hasn't been happening.
but certainly the evidence in the media would uh, appear to the contrary. And so on the back of that, the West and the Allies now sort of stepping up its sanctions against Russia. And really the Russian economy is sort of close to falling into a big abyss. Because certainly the Russian people, uh, you know, are facing uh, some pretty major uh, obstacles out there we sort of no food on the shelves in the supermarkets um obviously you know, gasoline prices they're still rising a little bit out there um but you know really they've pretty much got nowhere to go But certainly as well, uh, certainly unrest is starting to grow within Russia now as these sort of pictures are starting to be uh, sort of filtering through. Imagine getting through some of that on the sort of social media, etc. Despite the major sort of censorship and banning of uh, social media in Russia. So it would just be very interesting to see how it sort of plays through because at uh, the moment, you know, it's hard to see how Russia comes out of this with any sort of uh, saving face or any sort of dignity. And especially President Putin. So I sort of mentioned all briefly spiked uh, below that sort of $100 a barrel, but it's back now sort of trading plus or minus two bucks on a $100 a barrel. And certainly the UK and Europe are still sort of ex experiencing uh, sort of fresh outbreaks of COVID with potentially a new variant out there now called XE, which is sort of a combination of sort of Omicron B1 and B2. So as well as having to deal with that, the inflation implications of the high oil prices and also the refugee crisis as well. So it will just be interesting to see how this sort of plays through because I said at present the ECB is still on sort of quantitative easing mode, no talk about rate hikes, and just going to be very interesting to see how that sort of plays through. In Australia the budget seems to be pretty well received, although uh, you know certainly in uh, Queensland and New South Wales they're still sort of coming to terms with the sort of uh, recent flooding and it's going to take uh, you know quite a bit of uh, sort of clean up and the sort of rebuilding to, uh, to get back to uh, um, pre-flood uh, pre levels. Now obviously the implications of that sort of rebuilding, cleaning up, does, uh, is being impacted as well by sort of COVID because certainly the supply chains are getting pretty, uh, pretty well stretched out there. Although it is starting to ease, if you look at the uh, uh, Baltic Dry Index, um, that's been falling now for the last sort of couple of months. You know, certainly the Australian economy is sort of being buoyed by the higher commodity prices, um, you know, so iron ore, um, etc. You know, it's really sort of pushing up at uh, some pretty, pretty reasonable levels. And that, given the relaxation of the borders, etc., the Australian economy looks in pretty good shape over the next sort of six to nine months. Now, here in New Zealand, government facing sort of fresh criticism for leaving the country still in the red traffic light system. Um, they sort of relaxed some of the uh, um, sort of restrictions in terms of sort of uh, vaccine passports. Uh, but, you know, still, uh, it, it's still pretty tough on the hospitality. Um, the decision now will be uh, reviewed again on the Thursday before uh, Easter and Good Friday. On a cynical view, you would look that the government will look to relax it and move us uh, to, all to orange um, just in time for the school holidays.
you know, interesting. The, the reason why it wasn't moved uh, on on Monday was the fact that you know there's still a bit of strain on the on the uh, health system. But interesting, hospitalizations are down 30% from the peak. Now the other big news out there is the uh, sort of uh, capital raising from Air New Zealand um, with the rights issue. Um, you're getting one right for every share you hold. Um, and then if you take up those rights, you get a chance to buy uh, two uh, Air New Zealand shares at 53 cents. Now the rights are tradable as well, so if you're not going to take up the rights, um, then it's uh, probably worthwhile having a look and seeing if it is uh, uh, worthwhile you selling them, so you at least get uh, some sort of monetary benefit from, uh, from the rights issue. Good one property, I've got a bond out there as well, uh, five years, minimum rate will be 4.5%. Indicative rate at present is around sort of 4.8%. Now, if you're interested in that, go to the website www.baefinancialpartners.co.nz. Also, time to start looking at uh, KiwiSaver as well. Make sure you've made enough contributions to get that government contribution. Um, you know, just remember in the uh, in the year um, 1st of July to 30th of June, um, you have to put in 1,042.84 cents to get the maximum uh, government contribution. Just interesting as well, house prices in Auckland are starting to fall just a little bit. Um, it's just going to be interesting to see uh, uh, how much further they fall and uh, when it starts to spread to the rest of the country. Because potentially we see uh, house prices falling, mortgage rates rising, consumer confidence lower, business confidence lower. Instead of sort of rates rising at uh, year end, you could make a case for a rates to be uh, actually cut by year end. So if you are looking for income options, uh, go to the website www.baefinancialpartners.co.nz for lots of interesting articles and we'll look forward to speaking to you soon.